Stand as we hear the gospel reading from Luke, chapter 12, verses 5 through 19. Glory to Christ our This is the gospel of Christ that we bring to you this day. Jesus speaks about the future. Some of his disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the wall. But Jesus said, The time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Teacher, they asked, When will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place? He replied, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah, and saying, the time has come, but don't believe them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic, don't get upset. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end won't follow immediately. Then he added, Nation will go to war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and there will be famines and plagues in many lands, and there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons, and you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. For I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you, even those closest to to you. Your parents, brothers, relatives and friends will betray you. They will even kill some of you. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But not a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will win your souls. God always blesses the hearing of the Holy Word. This is the Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Sure, friends, what a reading. My goodness. As we go to interpret these words, we also come with a sense of humility to hear that what God does and the miraculous things that are done when we think it's impossible. So, I just want you to know this day that it is a time of um, great tribulation, great worry, and great uncertainty. And so let us start the sermon with prayer. I invite you to take some time to pray for our land, for our nation, in a way that we may hear new things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we go into this time of reflection, we come into it with a sense of gratitude for the words and encouragement that you give to us in tough times. Lord, let us hear you now 
and in the future. Amen. Faith is likely to be described by Christians as a sacred, cherished, personal, serious part of our lives. After all, accepting what the Bible says, trusting in God's plan, and believing in Christ's death and resurrection all directly impact how Christians live today. But as much as it is very serious, we can also have good, clean humor that brings great delight to the community. We are people of joy. So I'm going to ask a little fun question this morning to see if you can answer it. Think of all the biblical characters you know. And here's the question. Which biblical character was super fit in the Bible? <laughs> we haven't got it yet. Yes, he had, he had some strength. Elijah? Okay, I'm going to tell you, because it's, uh, this one is a hard one. It's Absalom. <laughs> you will hear about Absalom later in the sermon again. But it's a time for us to... to um, we're going to think about Absalom, because he had some muscle, and he had some gift from God. But he also, if you choose to use it in a wrong way, it's going to hurt you. And so we're going to have a look at that. But we also today are celebrating the joy that happened and the spirit that's in this church, this aliveness from the coach party um, and from just being in community together. So the church is a place of joy. And as we hear God in the scriptures saying, I create Jerusalem, land of bread, to be a joy, a place of joy for everyone. And we are presently in the business of creating the Lord's joy in our midst, where the lamb and the lion can and will lie down together. Have you ever thought of that text? I've never preached on it. Uh, Prof, have you preached on the lamb and the lion? Well, maybe I'll let you preach on it then. So I'll leave it for today. But I, if you look at the lamb and the lion, no, you know, it's good news for the lion to have the lamb sleeping right next to him. But is it good news for the lamb? And I've always puzzled over that. And until there's enough for everybody to eat and more, the lamb will be in danger. And so we are about having the opportunity to bring the lion and the lamb together because we are in the position of giving everybody opportunities. But the Lord says it's not going to be easy. There will be wars and uprisings. And then the Lord says, now this is sometimes I have to wait until I get to heaven to ask those questions. In the midst of earthquakes, pestilence, anger, the Lord says, do not be frightened. Now, I don't know about you, but as I watched the Ukraine and the Russian war, I was deeply grieved and frightened that our values have changed so much. Deeply frightened. I weep and can't help feeling afraid. Then I'm once again reminded of the new heaven and new earth we are promised by our Lord to those who are faithful. And Isaiah, in Isaiah 12, he responds, I will trust and will not be afraid. Here's my mentor. 
Here's the one that I need to stand with. The Lord is my strength and my song, no matter what happens. This, there is no easy battle. In Luke, we see there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence. We will be seized at times and betrayed. Stand firm, dear people, and you will win life. That is what we're told. Those in Thessalonians who are faithful show they will never tire of doing what is good. And it reminded me of um, the day before yesterday where Yvonne Drosti was doing all the shopping for these young children. Now, they didn't, they didn't just get any prezi. They each asked for something, and she went and found those things for each one. Each of them had their name on their cup. They were affirmed as people of God. While she was getting these prezies for 27 people, she was betrayed. Somebody stole her phone. Um, you know, and things when, you, when it's already tough to do all of these things. And then you have an experience like that. Those are not easy ones, but the faithful continue to stand. And as I see you in church this morning, I say, these are the faithful who continue to stand. Let us join them. Let us, like Isaiah, be able to say, I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. What God has asked us to look at seri seriously and is helping us to strengthen us that we can be good, kind, loving Christians, even when we're betrayed. Now, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. How do we handle this? For if we act like the world and take revenge on those people, we are choosing to stand with the world. We are not choosing to show our Christian muscle. Trust is a central part of our relationship. We know how to do that. But we cannot believe it when we are betrayed because it doesn't make sense. Anything that is not of God does not make sense to a Christian. And Jesus is saying, I want you to stand. I don't want you to fall. Sin is not the end of the story. Good news is. Betrayal is when our trust is broken. We feel terrible because we know just how precious trust is in the Christian journey. We have a right to be upset when someone has not valued what we have to offer. And the closer the person is to you, the greater the hurt. Into this context, Jesus says, do not take revenge. How easy it is to be human. How easy it is to say, I will never contact that person again. Or I will show them just how they are acting and give them great revenge and will punish them. And yet, God is saying to us to see the new world and participate in the resurrection We have to not allow ourselves to want to take revenge. That is a normal human thing. And yet God is asking us for a miracle and to participate in that miracle. We are asked to address two critical areas. Receive our strength from the Lord to be a joyful people and share that even joy even when we have great joy, there are those who will betray us. Now that is what the Lord has told us. When people have demeaned, hurt, 
and devalued you. What is our response? We are called to do and loving things without vengeful hearts. We cannot do this without God. When somebody hurts you that greatly, it is not possible to love them without God. We need God's help. The famous betrayal that we know is that of Judas, um, Judas Iscariot. He sold out Jesus for 30 shekels of silver. People are betrayed each day by family, friends, work colleagues, enemies. You feel like that you've been put under the bus. The action is deeply hurtful. Do we go on with life ignoring that person, having vengeful thoughts, pretending that the person does not exist, or do we pick ourselves up? No God is strengthening us to give the betrayer the opportunity to see a bigger picture of the joy given us in life. To betray is to be unfaithful, break a trust. There are those who have their trust broken. It could be a special person who broke your trust or a special friend that betrayed a trusted secret and told somebody else. The disciples besides Judas could wonder when Jesus said, one of you is to betray me. Could they be asking, is it I, Lord? Surely not I. David Wilkerson from the cross and the switchblade says of Judas Iscariot, he was a hand-picked disciple of Jesus Christ, a preacher of the gospel, healer of the sick, a traveling companion of Jesus. He was so trusted. He was made treasurer of their outreach team. Now here's our part. We have been chosen. But do we betray Christ by our actions, our anger, our sin at times? In the movie, The Moment of Truth, though I'm not recommending the, the series, um, the contestant was asked, have you ever stolen from an employer or denied it and let someone else take the blame? The contestant then explained that he worked at a hot dog stand and would pocket some of the earnings each day. But the contestant, when found out, named others. He not only stole from his employer, he also became a betrayer, not only of friendship, but trust. We see how Absalom, he launched a conspiracy against King David, which finally culminated in a battle and Absalom's death. Absalom used his power, his muscle, in the wrong way. What would the ending have been if Absalom had found a way to trust David and work together with him? Would Absalom have died? What was David, the father's reaction, when he heard of Absalom's death? He was a faithful man. And he said, oh, my son, Absalom. Though Absalom had betrayed his father and was there to take over the kingdom, he wept to the chamber over the gate and wept. Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom. Would I have died instead of you? Oh, Absalom, my son, David laments. Instead of saying to him, like what is normal and not of the faith journey. Now you see what happens when you betray your father. He didn't say that. 
Absalom had planned to even take every bit of his father's kingdom. He got a chariot and horses for himself and men to run before to signal his power. And his father still laments that his son had used his muscle and intelligence in the wrong way. But he would like to have saved him. So what does this mean for us? God has made promises to us of a new heaven and a new earth. We have to do our part in bringing that new heaven and new earth into being. For joy to be with us, we have to know how we can help those who hurt and betray us to see the faith road and find joy, not by revenge or punishment, but giving the betrayer a new way of working at life and not punishing and becoming part of the old world of revenge and punishment. It does seem impossible and probably is impossible without God's help. Are you willing to embrace God's way? For if you are, you will be using your spiritual abs well. You will be strengthened and will be building trust that we may all be a part of the house of Jerusalem, the house of bread. We can be a part of building and planting and eating of the fruit of our land. God's land in South Africa is there for us to grow, to build, and to bring life abundant. Because of your stand, you will win life. Because of your stand, we will know the new heaven and new earth. May we always trust, never tire of doing good. The Lord is here, strengthening us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen.